Hey YouTube, what's up? This is Ben from ShouldIGetIt.com. Welcome to episode 17 of Shooting Cars, the show where I teach you how to shoot and edit better photos of your car or your friend's cars. In this episode, we're going to be talking about how to go from this basic standard static shot to a virtual rig type rolling shot. So we're going to be talking about path blur, spin blur, and also a little bit of color adjustment purely in Photoshop. You don't need any other software. You don't even need to use Lightroom for this. And if you want to follow along, I will include a JPEG of this shot so that you can practice as well. I'm going to shut off my video so my computer has a little bit more power and let's get started. We're going to start. So the first thing we're going to do is blur the wheels and the tires. So to do that, once you have your image opened, hit Command J to duplicate it. And we're going to call this wheel blur. So once we have that, we're going to go up to filter, blur gallery, and down to spin blur. And spin blur is awesome because it makes making the wheels rotate really, really easy. And so what we're going to do is just grab this circle here and we're going to size it to be about the size of the rear rim. So you can see when I grab this, this changes how much it spins. So that's kind of the speed of the wheels. And then when you grab this dot in the middle, that lets you move it. So we're just going to move that to the center cap of the rim and then size this wheel so that it covers the rim and as much of the tire as you can get. If you can't get all the tire, don't worry. We're going to come back and we're going to do a little bit of a blur just for the tire tread. So that right there is about good. And then what you can do is change the blur angle here or again by spinning that in the middle and that changes the speed of the wheel. I don't want to make it look too crazy. So I'm going to do something like maybe a 10 degree blur. And then to duplicate this and have it on the front wheel, we're going to hold command and option if you're on a Mac or control and option on a PC, I believe. And we're going to click in the middle and just move that over and resize it for the front wheel and tire. So we have this set right about here and we're good. And if you have an image where it gets a little bit of the body panels, don't worry because what we can do is use a layer mask and that's actually exactly what we're going to do for the tire tread. So you can see that the wheel and the outside of the tire is spinning here on the rear, but the tire tread right here is still staying still and that's not going to sell the effect. Uh, so I'm actually going to make this a little bit bigger there and now we're good. So what you want to do is make sure you hit high quality here at the top. We want to have the best quality image and then hit OK. And now it's going to take a couple of seconds or maybe a few minutes, depending on your computer, to render this uh, spin blur image out. And then what we're going to do is duplicate that layer again and do a tire blur uh, using the same spin blur method. And then we're going to use layer masks that we've learned about in many of the previous episodes of shooting cars. And we're going to do that. So while we wait, I want to let you guys know that if you want me to take a look at your photos and critique them, give you some feedback of what you can do better, what I think of your photos, stuff like that. I'm thinking of doing an episode just covering feedback for your photos. So send me an email to ben at benrevson.com with about five images and a link to your Instagram. Uh, and that way I can go through them and keep in mind that I'm going to give very honest feedback. So if you're cool with that, send me an email and I'll try to make an episode of that. And if you want, send me a raw file uh, and I will you know, give it a shot at editing it and see what I come up with in comparison to your edit. So just keep that in mind. Email ben at benrevson.com with five of your images and a link to your Instagram and maybe a raw file if you want. Uh, and I'd be happy to take a look at editing it. So as you guys can see, we have uh, the wheel blur. It looks pretty decent. Sometimes the brakes look a little bit weird. It depends on the angle uh, you're going to do this, but we're just going to cover uh, for this image in the blur angle. So you can see that the wheel, you know, isn't totally blurred right here. I think we're still going to be okay. But uh, the bigger deal is that this tread is not blurred. So what we're going to do is we duplicated that layer. So now we have wheel blur copy. We're going to go back to blur gallery and select spin blur. And at that same 10 degree speed, we are going to select the tire tread back here. So I'm going to select that, make a little selection right about here. Maybe make that bigger and you can see that it makes the body warped as well, but you want the angle to be kind of the same spin. So we're going to rotate this. And as you can see, now we have the tire tread spinning and of course it's hitting the car kind of messing it up the front. You can't see as much, but I'll still duplicate this, make it a little bit smaller. So we have that. And then same thing. You want to make sure you check that high quality box at the very top right here, press okay. And it's going to render it. And here I'll just fast forward. Uh, to where it is done. All right, so as you guys can see, now we have the tire tread blurred, and you can see it is really messed up. You know, it's got the wheel and the body panels and all that, uh, and the same thing on the front, it's got the ground. So what we're gonna do is hit the layer mask button, hit Command-I to invert, 
And then we're going to grab a white brush, go to about 70% opacity, and we can just brush in where we want that blur, okay? And now on the rear, same thing. You can see that as I brush white, the blur is starting to appear on the tire tread. And this has a little bit too much of the body, so I'm gonna get rid of that right here. And that looks a little bit better. Okay, so now we have the spin blur on the wheels, and if we hit Command G with these two layers together, that'll group it. So you can see now we have the wheels and tires blurred. And of course, you can go into more depth with this uh, and really get it to spin perfectly, and you can do multiple layers to get all parts of the tire to blur, uh, and then you'll be set. So. Once we have that, what we need to do is make the ground blur to make it look as if the car is moving. So what we're gonna do for that is select the car using the pen tool, and then we are going to use the path blur tool to blur it all. So to do this, this is gonna be the most painstaking part. It may take you 20 minutes, 30 minutes, maybe even an hour if this is your first time selecting a car. But what we're gonna do is zoom in really, really close, select the pen tool over here, and we're going to make a selection around the car. Now, if you've never used the pen tool, I recommend watching the video that's linked in the description down below. It's a very good lesson on using the pen tool. It's gonna to be super helpful for a lot of your Photoshop stuff coming up. Pretty much you click where you want to select, and you're gonna click around the car, not including the shadow, but just click around and go down the tires as closely as you can, and do this for the entire car. So you can see, as I'm clicking around, basically it's gonna make a selection path. And we're gonna keep clicking, make sure you get the bottom of the tire as well. And we're gonna go through and do the whole car. And so once you have the car done, what you're gonna do is connect the dots. You'll see this little circle show up uh, to anchor the point. You're gonna hit that and then select uh, or control click on it rather and hit make selection, feather it about 10 pixels. Now, what I've done is I've already selected this car, so I don't have to waste your time, but you can see that I'm using the pen tool. I've selected around everything, the mufflers, the tires, around the bumpers, around the little spoiler here, the antenna up top, everything is selected. And then with the pen tool, again, I'm going to make the selection and you can see that now the car is selected. So if, for example, I were to copy this and paste it and turn off all the layers, you'd see that all I have is the car selected and it's not the most perfect selection. As you can see, it's got some rough edges in it, but it'll work uh, and I'll show you exactly what we're gonna do from there. So let me go back to my selection here and now we're good. So pretty much at this point, you should have the car selected. You should have these marching ants around it. And what we're gonna do is go to select and inverse. So this way the actual selection is gonna be the background now and not the car. And then what we're gonna do is go up to uh, our wheel blur layer and we're going to go to filter blur gallery and path blur and if you've ever heard of virtual rig or seen virtual rig this is kind of uh, what path blur is very similar to so you can see you have this arrow right here and this is where the blur starts and where it ends so what you want to do is follow the lines in the image so for example we have this line right here which is the edge of the road so I'm going to make this start over here and go down this way because that's the direction uh, opposite of the car traveling. So you want the blur to go there. And you see that we have this point here and you can see the road kind of curves, right? It's not a straight line. So I'm gonna grab this point right here and I'm gonna pull it up right about there so it follows the curve of the road. And then I'm gonna pull that and there we go. So now we have a blur set and let me pull that up right there. So now we have the road blurred and what we can do here is select the speed. So of course you don't wanna to go too crazy with this. This looks like literally warp speed uh, and just totally ridiculous. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a slower speed, maybe about 52% just to give you an example. Uh, and what you wanna watch out here for is if you have, let's say some bushes or the sky or something uh, that's further away, they're not always gonna be as blurred or you want to make sure that the line is straight. So what I'm gonna do is uh, put another line and this just kind of helps the computer figure out the blur uh, that it doesn't get distorted. You'll see what I mean if you're practicing on your own images you might have some parts where there's like bushes that just look twisted and twirled instead of as if it's motion blur and so just add extra lines and you know whatever direction you think the blur should go that's where you should add lines. So in some images you might just have one or two of these blue lines in some you might have 40 to 50. Uh, 
So in some of these images, you might have just two of these blue lines and in others, you might have four or five or six. Uh, I've never had more than six, I think, but you know, it's possible depending on how much you have going on in the image, you may need to straighten or twist various parts of it. So once you have that, you can select your speed and then the taper, as you can see, is how much it blurs the uh, beginning to how much it blurs the end. And so I don't wanna mess with the taper too much. I'm gonna leave it between zero and 10%. Here I have it at six. And again, we're gonna select high quality and hit okay. And now it's gonna render that and we're gonna fast forward until that blur is done. All right guys, so now we have the path blur set. And as you can see, we have the wheel spinning, we have the background blurred, but when you look through the windows of the car, you can clearly see that it is not moving here. So what we're gonna have to do is add some blur through the windows. And another thing to mention is the sky as it's much, much further than the foreground shouldn't be as blurred. So what we're gonna do really quick is turn on a layer mask for this and we can rename this now to wheel and background blur. And now that we have a layer mask, what we can do is paint black with a low opacity. I'm gonna do about 40%, so hit four on my keyboard. And I can just paint right here. And what this is gonna do is bring a little bit more focus to the clouds and the top of the mountains and make it look a little bit more realistic, right? Because it's not always gonna be that blurred uh, because of the distance. And so you can play with this in the opacities and now you can see that we have the foreground blurring and then the top of the mountain a little bit less blurry and the sky almost not blurred at all. So we have that set. And now what we need to do is go through the windows. Now, of course, I recommend uh, that when you're shooting this, shoot from a low angle or actually have someone sitting in the car so that uh, you can do that. This image, I think I can get away with it because once I tint this rear quarter window, you'll see it looks like maybe, you know, you could make someone believe that there's a driver in there with their hands really low on the wheel uh, and that's covered by the door. So I think this shot is believable, but of course don't shoot a car straight from the side with nobody in it and then try to do a rolling shot because you know, that just, you can't sell the effect like that. So what we're gonna do now is again, using the pen tool or the lasso tool, uh, we are going to select just the background part through the windows. So make sure you don't select the steering wheel or the dashboard or the windshield wipers or anything. And I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna quickly using the lasso tool, uh, go and select the background. So the trees and the bushes and stuff that we can see through the car. And when you're doing this, you can create uh, additional selections like we've talked about in previous videos, like last week's tinting video by holding shift. And then that little plus icon shows up. So I'm gonna go through right here, select in the steering wheel. And where's our little anchor point? All right, so we're good right there. And then we're gonna go to this back window and again, holding shift, make the selection and make sure you don't get any of the car because if you blur like the headrests or the mirror or the steering wheel, it's just not gonna sell the effect very well. So you wanna take your time here and click through everything and get it done. So right here, I'm gonna make that selection and I'm gonna do the side windows and then the back window uh, with two different path blurs. And this is just to be a little bit more precise with it. So again, we're gonna go to filter, then blur gallery and path blur. And we're going to set the line to the same speed. So make sure you have the same speed and the same taper so that it sells the effect. And then I'm gonna curve this right about here and maybe even slow it down a tiny bit. It doesn't have to be super blurred. So we have that, I'm gonna select high quality and hit okay. All right, and now we have the windows blurred as well. So you can see that now it's blurred through the windows and now we just have to do it through the rear window. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that same method and fast forward until that's done. All right guys, so now I have the uh, view through the window blurred as well. I have the rear view window blurred and what I wanna to do to sell the effect a little bit more because I don't have a driver in this car or not one that you could see is I wanna tint this back window. So we're gonna follow the steps from last week's episode we're going to just select this window portion right here. So the whole glass panel using our lasso tool again, polygonal lasso tool. And once I have this selected, all I need to do is select, paste, do a color overlay of black. And now I have my window tinted and I can select how dark I want it. I want it about right there. And so we have that window tinted and that you know, will make sure that people's eyes aren't 
too drawn to that. So when people see the card, hopefully they care about that more than the lack of a driver in it. If I wanted, I could also tint the rear window. Uh, I'm not gonna go through that. If you want, of course you can do that because you have the knowledge to do that. So uh, let's see, here's the base image. Here is the wheel blur and the ground blur. And now what I wanna do just kind of as finishing touches is create a new group. I'm gonna call that adjustments. So let's call this adjustments. And I'm going to uh, get a little bit of the color out of the ground. As you can see, there's kind of this like orange yellow haze right here. So what I'm going to do is again, using the lasso tool, I'm going to go through and kind of select just around the car uh, very quickly because I'm going to feather this. So it's not a huge deal. But I'm going to go through and make sure that I select everything around the car because the shadow needs to be desaturated as well. So I'm selecting here and Boom, we have that done. So it shouldn't take too long, don't be too precise with it. We're gonna feather this by about 100 and, let's say 20 pixels. So you can see it's nice and round. And what I'm gonna do is go to my adjustment layer selection, go to hue saturation. As you can see, there's a lot of color in this ground actually, if I, of course, boost the saturation. So I'm gonna bring the saturation down, not totally to black and white, but just a little bit. And then if I want to make it darker, I could. If I want to make it lighter, I could. I'm gonna leave it right about there. So now that we have a little bit of color out of the ground, what I want to do is add like a finishing touch to the image and really sell it. And I can either do that with color or a lens flare or both. So I'm going to show you how I add lens flare. Uh, I know this is very taboo, whether you want to do it or not, but I'm going to make a new layer, call it black, fill it with black right here. And then what we're going to do is go to filter, render, and lens flare. So I'm going to select the flare, Put it right about in the corner. You know, imagine that the car's here. It's driving up to the corner there. And I'm gonna just make it bright like that. Hit OK. And now you can see I have this flare, but how do I get rid of a black? Because I can't just use magic wand because that's not gonna work very well. So we're gonna go to our layer blending modes, choose screen. And now you can see that the lens flare is coming through. Now this is way, way, way too bright and crazy. And so what we're gonna do is bring the opacity down, maybe around 30% right here maybe even lower than that. And then what I'm gonna do is hit layer mask and I don't want this part of the flare here. So I'm gonna to go to about 70% opacity and start brushing it away. So it'll be a very, very light flare and do about 40% brush here. And you can see now there's just a little bit of lightness coming in on the front of the car. And if I want, I can go down to adjustment layers, gradient map, and I could do a cool black and white like this, or what I'm gonna do just for example's sake is I'm gonna select this multicolored one. It's kind of like a red and yellow and purple. Uh, and I'm gonna go down to soft light and just bring the opacity way, way down. And as you can see, this just adds a tiny hint of purples into the image. And now we are done. So again, we can go from our standard image right here. So this is just the background. Then we applied the blur. So this is the wheel blur using spin blur and path blur for the background. We went through the windows to make sure we got that. We tinted the back quarter window right here of the car. And then we added a little bit of a lens flare and color. And now we're done. So that is the completed image, guys. Please tag me in whatever you come up with on Instagram at a car photographer. I hope you went through this whole tutorial and found it useful. If you did, make sure to subscribe. I'll be releasing another video next week on Thursday at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time talking about keyboard shortcuts in Lightroom. It'll save you a ton of time over the years of editing you're gonna be doing that. So I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Peace.